Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, let's talk about how to add warmth and vibe to your Logic projects. You know, we spend so much time trying to get the best takes that we can, and we spend so much time writing and producing the best song we can, mixing it the best we can, but yet it can still feel like that our tracks are missing something, right? And usually it's like warmth and vibe that seems to be in other productions, but not in our own projects. So today I wanna to show you a couple of processors that come right with Logic that you can use to add that warmth, that vibe, that glue, so your projects are right in line with the tracks that you like to listen to. Now I'm thinking styles of music such as hip hop or electronic that might be more software instrument based, but of course this could extend to rock music or anything else. But again, when we're working with samples and software instruments that have been meticulously recorded, meticulously sampled, you know, they sound fantastic. Yet when we try to glue it all together into a single cohesive mix, sometimes it feels like it's lacking a little bit. So to start with, I have a riff, I have a demo that my friend and I have written. And you know, it's just a demo. It's more hip hop oriented and we've used mostly Logic instruments. Let's take a quick listen to this project as is, and then we'll start to introduce some of the other processors and dissect from there. Okay, cool. So, you know, we're happy with the demo as it is so far, but feeling like it could use a little more warmth and glue to tie it all together. So let's dig into the mixer here. Within the mixer, you can see that on every single track and every single send, you can see that I have both the console EQ and the tape delay. So from here, let's just introduce both of these plugins to everything. And then we'll take a quick listen to the mix with these processors in place. And then we'll kind of compare back and forth, turn it off, turn it on and see how it's changing the mix. Here we go. Okay, it sounds quite a bit different. Now let's hear before and after. I'll bypass and I'll reintroduce as we listen. Cool. I definitely feel that we're getting more warmth in this track. Everything's kind of gluing together a little more. And even the center image kind of bevels out a little bit in a nice and pleasing way. Like the mix is lurching out at you a little more. The vocalist is kind of reaching for you a little more. So what's going on here? Again, as you can see, I have both the console EQ and the tape delay. So let's just bypass the tape delay for now. And let's take a quick look at the console EQ. Now, I feel that the Vintage EQ collection is highly underrated by Logic users. I mean, number one, we have three Vintage EQs that emulate three very famous pieces of gear. But on top of that, we have this whole output section where we can drive the signal into the hardware. So we have the console EQ, the graphic EQ, the tube EQ, and we can drive further into it up to 11, or, you know, we can dial it back quite a bit. In this case, I've set everything to 5.5 just to get a middle of the road saturation from the vintage EQ. And I think you'll hear that these EQs, just with the drive mode, adds a depth, it adds a width that wasn't present in the mix to begin with. So I'll bypass the console EQ and then I'll introduce it and we'll kind of compare and contrast that difference. To my ears, it's very pleasing. I very much like the life that the console EQ introduces. And you can use any of the three models that you prefer, console, graphic, tube, whichever. And you can even EQ with one model, but choose the output of a different model. But I'm loving the vibe that this introduces. Just to further demonstrate the value of the vintage EQs, let's just focus on the drums. I'll open the console EQ and I'll start to drive into the circuit and then back it off. So we can kind of hear the differences here.
You can really hear that kick knocking into the top of the hardware when we have the drive all the way to 11, but I'm gonna leave it at 5.5. After the console EQ, adding width and adding vibe and even a little glue to the mix, I then have the tape delay to add further saturation. Now it's worth pointing out, I'm not using the tape delay to add any sort of delay effect per se. In fact, you can see that the feedback is set to 0%. Delay time is set to 0 milliseconds. I've turned off the tempo sync to make sure of that. And then the wet knob is set to 80% to try to kind of level match before and after when I bypass and introduce the tape delay. So no dry signal, only wet. So we're hearing the drums and all of the other signals through the tape delay only. And what the result is, is a very apparent warmth being added to all the tracks. I also have a channel EQ here to reintroduce some high end to the track and even a touch at the very, very bottom. Because when it comes to the tape delay, it's not a subtle tape saturation where maybe it just kind of rolls off the highs a tiny bit. It's a very apparent, very obvious effect. And the effect can roll off the high end pretty significantly. So I've added this EQ just to reintroduce some high end. But to start with, we'll just take a listen to this track and then I'll introduce all the tape delays but not the channel EQ so we can hear that effect of the tape delay on this entire project. So the track definitely warms up, but you can hear that. The high end just gets rolled right off. So that's why we have the channel EQ. I would probably do this on a track by track basis, but just to make it very easy, I've applied the channel EQ to the stereo output. So now let's hear this before and after with the tape delay and the channel EQ being turned off and then on. So as you can hear, there's definitely warmth, there's vibe being added like a ton. So when I think of styles like hip hop, which is heavily sample based, where, you know, the origin was kind of ripping a sample from vinyl and then laying it across a drum machine and then adding filters, those samples experience quite a bit of filtering and vibe being thrown at it just because of the conversions from vinyl to tape, tape to probably disc, you know, all sorts of conversions going on and effects being applied. So the tape delay is a great way to add vibe. Just to further explore what's going on with the tape delay though, let's just listen to the drums again. And again, we set the delay time to zero milliseconds and for now, the feedback is set to 0%. And we have the clip threshold set to plus 20. Now the clip threshold is much like a compressor. If we drive the threshold down, at a certain point, our tracks are going to butt up against the ceiling or threshold of the tape delay. And the more we push down the threshold, the more we experience distortion, saturation, and kind of a compression going on. For this project, I didn't want to have that effect, but let's take a quick listen just so we can hear it. So you can hear there that as I push down the clip threshold, we're squashing the drums and we're really making them compact, adding some distortion compression. I'm going to leave the clip threshold at about negative three because I want to point out functionality of the feedback in addition to the character that we're adding. As we drive up the feedback knob, you experience more repeats from the delay. But in the case of the tape delay, the feedback can actually add a sense of saturation and distortion as well being fed into the character. So let's take a quick listen as I drive up the feedback. And just like that, you can add even more vibe saturation to your tracks. Now, that might be a little too intense for a lot of purposes, but nonetheless, playing with the clip threshold, playing with the feedback can introduce some interesting styles of saturation, vibe, and warmth to your tracks. So I hope that was helpful for you. 
If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.